People might wonder who the woman clothed with the sun is in uh, Revelation chapter 12. And um, in its own words, it says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Well, she's actually symbolic of the saints of all ages, the children of Israel and the uh, twelve apostles of the Lamb in the New Testament. And uh, she's the bride of Christ in Shaw. Now, the bride of Christ has been in existence since time began on this earth, even as far back as Adam and Eve. So even with Adam and Eve, you had this um, symbolism of the woman born out in, uh, in as far away as um, the book of Genesis, when God first created the world and made man and woman. Then uh, the serpent um, deceived Eve and then the serpent was given a uh, warning after deceiving Eve that, um, that it, this, this seed right, of this woman would bruise his head and thou shalt bruise his heel. In other words, bruise his heel is symbolic of putting Jesus on the cross. But the seed of the woman getting a blow to the devil's head symbolic of the um, the devil being defeated 2,000 years ago by the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So the woman that God was referring to in, in the early chapters of Genesis was the same woman that we have in Revelation chapter 12. There appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the sun. Well, uh, for instance, think of Adam and Eve. Think of Eve. They were naked and they were um, not ashamed. And you could say that Eve herself was clothed with the sun, even back then. Totally um, naked and, and uh, unashamed before God. And even the Lord, it says, would visit them in the garden and they would stand totally naked and unashamed before the Lord. Now, the Lord has always been Jesus Christ, whether he was named as Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. The Lord, in other words, the word Jesus Christ, the Lord was made flesh in the New Testament. And so we have the bride of Christ. But if you look into um, Jeremiah, it actually says, thy maker is thy husband. So even in the Old Testament, you had the same concept of the bride of the Lord being the bride of Christ, the Lord being the Lord, though the Lord hadn't been made flesh yet. Now, one example of this bride of Christ, bride of God, bride of the Lord, is in uh, Ezekiel um, chapter uh, 16. Sweet 16, you could say. And uh, again, it says, the word of the Lord came unto me. So it's Ezekiel speaking, and it's God um, speaking, uh, in fact, through Ezekiel, and Ezekiel writing the words of the Lord down, the word of the Lord. So the word of Jesus came to him, right? It's the Lord, it's the Lord Jesus. Lord of Lords, King of Kings, the Lord. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, um, and he's talking about the abomination of Jerusalem, because Jerusalem, in other words, Israel, the whole country had backslidden. <laughs> so son of man caused Jerusalem to know her abominations, right? So she's backslidden. And again, it's uh, much like today's world that you now have what you call spiritual Israel. You had physical Israel back then in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, seeing it isn't all about um, uh, Israel, physical Israel, you now have spiritual Israel. 
And in the same sense, you have um, spiritual Jerusalem. An angel in the book of Revelation took John on a spirit trip and he took him to see the lambs, um, the bride of Christ, the lamb's bride, right? And uh, he showed him uh, New Jerusalem. Now, New Jerusalem, symbolic of every stone in that building, each stone being symbolic of the um, bride of Christ. So in short, in seeing this new, this city, New Jerusalem, New Jerusalem, not Old Jerusalem, New Jerusalem being the people of God, being the bride of Christ, each stone in that, in that um, building, New Jerusalem, being a Christian, the bride of Christ, including the Old Testament saints and believers would have been the bride of Christ, though it wasn't worded that way. So he was shown um, this beautiful, wonderful, um, incredible city uh, coming down out of heaven from God. And uh, he's, it's called the Bride of Christ because it's symbolic. The whole of the book of Revelation is largely symbolic. So even the very um, uh, New Jerusalem, which comes down out of God from heaven, the, uh, when Jesus left this world, he says, behold, I, I go to, uh, I go to prepare, prepare a place for you that where I am, there ye may be also. And eventually you'll have this great um, city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. And uh, it's, it, the city is also symbolic of the Bride of Christ. And it will be the dwelling place of the Bride of Christ like the husband uh, goes and gets a house and then in that same sense carries the bride into the house so jesus being the husband has gone to prepare a place for us that where i am ye may be also so eventually the bride's house home will be new jerusalem and new jerusalem each stone in that building being symbolic of the very bride of christ so in the Old Testament, the Bride of Christ was largely Israel, though Israel backslid. And so um, Ezekiel uh, hears the word of the Lord and saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations, right? She's now backslidden Israel, backslidden Jerusalem, the capital city of, of, um, of Israel. So the whole country, Jerusalem and Israel being much one and the same. And say, thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, <clears throat> Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. So it's kind of a very quick kind of uh, brief history of how Abraham came out of Ur and uh, wandered in the land of Canaan uh, and such. So he's saying, thus saith the Lord God, is reminding them of their origins where they came from and um, though the wording isn't always um, easy to understand the picture you get was Abraham and the children of Israel coming out not such a uh, not coming out of not such a wonderful um, background and it reminds you of a verse that says he takes the lowly uh, from the dung heap and um, said of um, him with kings and princes and such words of that effect so it is um it is a kind of a very very um brief history of um the children of israel and they're kind of in a sense um very um boastful people in the old testament thinking they are of such um great um uh, importance and coming from such great backgrounds and everything else, Abraham and, and Isaac and Jacob being the forefathers of the children of Israel. But God um, steps this up and goes back a bit further than that and reminds them of their origins. And um, anyone who's ever become a Christian will also be reminded of their own origins in so reading and would be reminded that uh, he take of the lowly from the dung heap and uh, said of him or her or whoever with kings and princes and such. So this is often the way that God calls you out even of your own family 
as Abraham was called out of his family. Now, the background of Abraham's father or fathers was that they were actually into idolatry and, and served and worshipped other gods. But you had God calling Abraham out of all of this. So Abraham's origins, as far as his father and his background goes, wasn't always so desirable and didn't necessarily come out of something wonderful. And no doubt there were influences in his own life that weren't altogether good. And then God, when the time was right, calling him out of this. So calling him out of a dung heap kind of background that wasn't good and his father into idolatry and worshipping other gods. <clears throat> and Abraham being called out of all this. And so it says, Son of man caused Jerusalem to know her abominations and say, Thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth <clears throat> and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. So that's kind of their origins where it all started largely with Abraham. <clears throat> he was called out of the land out of Ur of the Chaldeans and then wandered in the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother an, an Hittite. From that, you gather that there was a, a heathen, as they called them back then, uh, influence in the family, right, the family background, had influences that weren't altogether good, so they're influenced by the culture and the spiritual culture and everything else of the people around them and the Hittites, if you read up on that. In short, the Amorite and thy mother and Hittite, they weren't altogether um, nice people. They're very ungodly people, very warlike and all this sort of thing. So all of this having not such a good influence on, on the background, even of Abraham, who is renowned as being the father of the Jews, right? The God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God said to Moses, so holding um, Abraham in a high, um, a high regard, but um, God here going one step or two steps or how many steps further back, and it turns out that Abraham didn't come back, come from such a wonderful background. And so um, God is um, saying there are other influences in the family back then, Abraham's Father was into idolatry and what have you. And uh, Abraham was a court called out of all this, come out of your father's um, house, so to speak, and I will receive you. A, a good verse in the New Testament says that Jesus said, if ye are of the world, the world would love its own. But because I've chosen you out of the world, therefore... The world hateth you. So a lot of us are in this world and we don't feel we're of the world. And then God eventually calls us out of the world. And so uh, we become, um, in, in that same sense, in a form of a wilderness. Though we might live in our various towns, etc., or various cities or various countries, that doesn't mean um, we're necessarily part of it if you're of the world. The world would love its own, but because I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates of you. They don't understand you. So you are called out of the world. Come out from among them, Jesus says, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and I will receive you. Now, this is what happened to Abraham. He was called out of the world. Now, the thing is, with the world and God's children, they're often rubbished and neglected by the world and in this same sense thrown onto what you might call a dung heap. <clears throat> and so God um, calls us out of all of this and sees uh, something in us that other people can't see. And so this chapter 16 in Ezekiel is very, very good. For a lot of us, because a lot of us um, by this world and even by our birth and by our parents and our background and our status in life or our 
class or whatever it is, or our town or our city or the people all around us, we feel um, rubbished and violated and neglected and abused and of no consequence and no one has the time for you and you are just a piece of trash or a piece of dung beneath their feet. So this, um, though it might not quite use the same words, this chapter is good because it's been the uh, the song and the story and the tale of many a saint and many a Christian and many a called out person doesn't necessarily come from such a wonderful background as uh, as uh, the um, the proud um, Jews of this chapter like to think they did. So God reminding them of their past, of how he saw something in them <clears throat> that no one else could see, and much like that New Jerusalem, every stone in that building um, shimmering with light and being a precious stone. God sees us as precious stones. He sees us as his peculiar treasure. And he sees beauty in us, whereas others um, see um, nothing and ugliness or we're rubbish or we're trodden underfoot or we're of no consequence and no regard and therefore pushed aside and, uh, and we think we're nobody nowhere and nothing until uh, one day we get our calling from Jesus and we realise we're so much more in the eyes of God, in the eyes of Jesus, in the eyes of the Lord. And this is um, brought out in this chapter, <clears throat> though it might not use the same wording, and it is indeed talking about the very bride of Christ, the woman clothed with the sun. And don't forget, I, uh, when God made Eve and brought her to Adam, and they twain become one flesh, she coming to Adam being clothed with nothing else other than the sun. And in this sense, that being clothed with the sun is symbolic of the righteousness uh, of, of Christ, right? In that we should be clothed with nothing else other than the righteousness of Christ. And in this, we are clothed with the sun and would stand just like Eve, just like Adam and Eve, totally um, naked before God. And like Eve, I always think, because being a man, you prefer to look at Eve and her beauty, being clothed with nothing other than the sun. <clears throat> so clothed with the sun, very, very fitting for the bride of Christ and the woman uh, that God was referring to when he said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed, in other words, between her children, uh, between the devil's children and, and, and between thy seed and her seed. So there would always be enmity between the devil's children and God's children. And the woman in that chapter, in the early chapters of um, Genesis, being symbolic of the bride of Christ. And uh, that's where her story begins, right there in the Garden of Eden, when God referred to her as being the woman, so the woman being the bride of Christ, I will put enmity between thee, between the, uh, the devil and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. In other words, between um, the devil's children and God's children and God calling his children, his bride out of the world. If you of the world, the world would love its own. But because I've chosen you out of the world and called you out of the world right there for the world hate of you. <clears throat> now, so you might feel like you are um, totally rubbish and uh, disregarded by the world, but God sees something uh, more than this in you. And so the story um, uh, goes on. For, this is um, God, the Lord, speaking through Ezekiel. So um, he says, um, and uh, as for thy nativity, right, the, your origins, so this is largely symbolic. And as for thy nativity, in the day, in the day that thou was um, born, it's largely talking about spiritual Israel in the Old Testament, so the Old Testament um, Jewish believers, right? And God holding them in high regard in that he sees beauty in them. 
that no one else can see, and they um, coming out of, um, in, in Abraham's case, coming out of her, and his father's into idolatry, so into the dung heap, and Abraham being called out of all of this. <clears throat> As for thy nat nativity, in the day that thou wast born, thy navel was not cut. Now, imagine a child when he's born and the navel isn't cut. Well, you would still be attached to the mother's afterbirth. This would lead to a serious infection. So when a person's born, they simply cut the navel and then you form a belly button eventually. And uh, there's no, um, no danger of infection coming from the afterbirth and such. So, um, and as for thy nativity, the day that thou was born... Thy navel was not cut. Well, if a mother or a father doesn't even cut your navel, you are extremely a neglected child, a neglected baby. Now, this is what it's saying, that when you came into the world from the very word go, now, from the very word go, uh, very, uh, the word go, many, many people were born and raised, and, well, you could go one step further, conceived uh, and, and born, and raised in sin, so conceived when your mother and father went out and got sloshed. They went back home and they had a drunken uh, sexual orgy and took drugs, etc. Got into how knows what, even heroin uh, and violated everything and consequently um, conceived and you were um, conceived of in the womb and weren't even wanted. Maybe they would have contemplated an abortion, etc., but it ended up having you and you being neglected from the word go, that you of no consequence, you simply got in the way. So this is what it's saying. And as for thy nativity, the day thou was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to subtle thee. You imagine a mother doesn't even wash her own baby. She doesn't really care about him, doesn't even want him. He's a burden to her. She would rather have aborted him, but couldn't bring herself round to do that. But in the end, she had to have you. So you kind of born, you were conceived and born and raised in sin from the word go and were polluted largely from birth. So um, this is um, like saying the children of Israel's background, far from um, con uh, contrary to popular opinion, wasn't always desirable. And the forefathers of Abraham were into um, idolatry and the gods all around them. And you could say Abraham was born onto a dung heap in that respect and God calling him out of his father's house. So neither wast thou washed in water to subtle thee. Thou wast not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. So totally neglected back then, they would wash them in salt, and salt being a, a cleaning uh, agent of sorts, and, and therefore um, cared for, loved, looked after right from the word go. So why right from the word go, it doesn't necessarily follow that Abraham himself was even looked after as he should have been. So it's surprising what their backgrounds may or may not have been. Though I don't know the exact background, but God and um, paint the picture here that the background of a lot of his saints weren't always um, desirable. None I pitied thee, pity thee, to do um, any of these things unto thee. This is both largely symbolic as well as kind of literal. None I pity thee to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion on thee, but thou wast cast out in the open field. Lo, the loathing of thy person in the day that thou wast born. So from the word go, your life was one big bum rat, as they say. No one uh, loved you, no one cared about you. No one gave a damn about you and you were largely cast aside, tossed asunder of no consequence and rubbished from the word go, as is this case with so many saints. The same with the children of Israel of old. And Abraham, even you do wonder, it doesn't say, but basically talking about the children of Israel's background 
and God painting this picture relates it to whoever you will, even when they were land of Egypt, the Pharaoh turned on them all, and uh, Pharaoh wanted to kill all the children, all the firstborn men, babies, and toss them into the river. So you can relate it to that if you like, so of no consequence. And the great nation around them being great uh, world empire at that time being Egypt uh, uh, review, uh, regarded the children of Israel of, of no consequence, but rather they were to be rubbished and gotten rid of and thrown into the great river Nile and strangled at birth, so to speak, but in their case, drowned at birth. And of course, you do wonder, did they even cut the navel? Did they take off the afterbirth? Did they even wash the babies? Well, just cast asunder into the River Nile and drown. So um, such has been the life of the children of God of all ages, largely uh, many coming out of such backgrounds. And God reminding them of their origins. And he's saying to them, um, and when I, uh, so none I pity thee to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee. But thou was cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person, rubbish, right, in the day that thou was born. Now God, uh, the Lord here, sees something that no one else can see in you. And when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, right, it's a picture, a baby discarded and unwanted, and um, polluted in thine own blood. I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, live. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, live. God saw something in you, a precious baby, a precious child of God. I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field, and thou hast increased. So this tiny little bud of a baby, discarded, neglected, thrown aside, God sees it as a little bud, and he nurtures the little bud, the tiny little bud, poking its head out of the soil, born into this world. And uh, the Lord Jesus, the Lord God, right, seeing something um, of hope. For this dear little baby child of God, seeing this baby as a precious stone, a precious child of God, and not to be rubbish, neglected and thrown aside and tossed back onto the dung heap, etc. I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field, and thou hast increased and waxen grey. And thou art come to excellent ornaments, right? So he nurtured the child and watched it grow into a beautiful, young, uh, wonderful, gorgeous, lovely uh, woman. And so again, you have the symbolism born out here. The woman clothed with the sun, totally uh, naked in the eyes of God. And clothed with nothing else other than the sun. Much like the woman, uh, Eve, in the Garden of Eden. And uh, God uh, seeing beauty that no one else could see. I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field. And thou hast increased and waxen great. So grown into a beautiful, gorgeous, attractive girl, right? The bride of Christ, symbolised. And thou art come to excellent ornaments, right? So thy breasts are fashioned and thine hair is grown. Whereas thou, art, thou wast naked and bare. So God um, sees this beautiful girl in, in his eyes, totally uh, naked and bare. And she's matured into a beautiful, attractive, uh, young, beautiful girl, right? Now, when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. So she's come into maturity, gone through puberty and come of age. And God sees uh, in her a potential bride. 
Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. So God saw such a beautiful, attractive girl that he even married this girl and she became his. He spread his skirt, I, I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. Then washed I thee with the water, with water, yea, I uh, thoroughly washed away the blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil, right, poured down his spirit upon her, and anointed her with oil. I clothed thee also with broidered work, and shod thee with badger's skin. And I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. I declared thee also with all, I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thy hands, and a chain on thy neck. I put a jewel in thy forehead, and earrings in thine ears, and a beautiful crown upon thy head. So the woman clothed with a sign with the with the sun, having a beautiful crown upon her head. Thus wast thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and broidered work. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou wast exceedingly beautiful. And thou didst prosper into a kingdom. So talking about the children of Israel of old and viewing her as his bride, thy maker is thy husband. And she being his bride in this same sense, picking her up, taking her from the dung heap and setting her up as his queen, his bride, his queen, the very bride of Christ. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty, for it was perfect through my kindness, which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God. Now, the story obviously ends uh, sad here because um, Israel became a backsliding nation and got into whoredoms and wasn't faithful to her husband. And some of the wording here isn't uh, is very very um, fitting in describing a, a, an adulterous um, wife who goes off with other men and even spreads her legs. It says to other men. So um, quite a sad ending for the uh, children of Israel, and that is the very wording in here. I can't remember where I read that. But as a wife, thou committest adultery. Uh, verse 32, but as a wife thou committest adultery, which take of strangers instead of her husband. They give gifts to all whores, but thou givest thy gifts to all thy lovers, they do it the other way round, and hirest them that they may come unto thee on every side for thy whoredom. And the contrary is in uh, thee from other women in thy whoredoms, Whereas none follow thee to commit whoredoms, it is that thou givest reward, and no reward is given unto thee, therefore thou art contrary. Wherefore, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because thy fearfulness was poured out, and thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers, and with all thy the idols of thy abominations, and by the blood of the children which thou didst give unto them. So very, very um, sad ending to the, uh, the history story of the children of Israel and that um, she went all out after um, other lovers and was a, an adulteress um, uh, and everything else and not faithful to her husband. But um, even so, the uh, at first she was the very bride of Christ. And God, um, uh, uh, taking her from the dummy, 
and sang her up as in this same sense as, as his queen, his bride. So um, this is um, just part of the history of the um, the woman clothed with the sun in the uh, in chapter twelve of the book of Revelation, and simply uh, pointing out that she has been in existence ever since the um, Garden of Eden when God first created Adam and Eve. They twain, being one flesh, would have been the bride. Of Christ and the bride of Christ has um, had a long history all the way down through the Old Testament into the New, New Testament to this day. So she's the bride of Christ of all ages. Those who followed after, after God, after Jesus, with all their hearts, all their soul, and all their strength, and all their might, and were wholeheartedly married to um, God married to the Lord, married to Jesus. So the saints of all ages is what it's talking about uh, there in the uh, in chapter 12 of the book of Revelation. She being the bride of Christ of all ages and bringing um, spiritual children into the world through and with her husband, her husband now being named as Jesus Christ. So we are now the bride of Christ of this um, day and age. And God willing, we will um, love the Lord thy God with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength, and all of our body, and with all of our mind even, and follow after him wholeheartedly, and not backslide as did um, the children of Israel of old, and even to this day, they would be in the classification of backsliding Israel and not necessarily the bride of Christ in our day and age, but God calling um, other nations out of their various dung heap um, kingdoms and, and nations and cities, etc., even calling them out of their own families and God seeing them as a beautiful um, bride of Christ, a woman clothed with the sun. So praise Jesus.